Hey, what's up, fuckers? I'm Luis, and this is the first of hopefully many, many episodes of the Business of Fear podcast. I don't know if it's going to be an actual podcast like on any podcasting site or SoundCloud or iTunes or any of that, but it will be right here on YouTube and my channel, Business of Fear. So this is episode zero, and it's episode zero because it's not any type of review uh, review episode or top 13 or franchise ranking. This is me talking about how I became a horror fan, how I started the channel, what the original intentions were for the channel, what it, what it ended up being, and what it is now, which is not very active. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we can start out. I'm going to try and do timestamps. I don't know for sure. It might take a couple of days. I'm, I've been, uh, really busy. So videos have been few and far between. But, uh, I want to do timestamps in the description so you guys can know, hey, I'm talking about this, 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 and that. You can skip ahead, go back, whatever. But, um, Yeah, as far as a horror fan, horror is my favorite genre, and it has been for, fuck, man, since I was probably seven or eight, eight or nine, somewhere between there, but, uh, yeah, I love horror, I loved horror for the longest time, and I wasn't originally are initially into it rather like JP from the 22 shots of moods and horror you can also find him on double shot J he's like he, he says he was a, a horror fan from the time he was like five or something which to me was crazy because I was scared to death as a little kid of horror movies you know I have two vivid memories of being scared of the Crypt Keeper when he busts out of his coffin laughing. <laughs> you know, I was scared of that shit. Uh, I was scared of Chucky. I was scared of Freddy. A uh, story about that, a Freddy scare moment in my life is when I learned about... Uh, <laughs> I learned about shapes and what certain shapes can't go into certain areas. We were, I was a little kid, maybe five years old, four or five. And at that point, I'd seen horror movies, like not seen them, not watched them, but I'd seen clips and stuff where it was just scary shit. And uh, I was with my cousins and we were watching one of the Nightmare on Elm Street. It might have been four or five. But we were watching some point in the movie where Freddy does something and it scared me I remember it scared me I was on the floor they were back behind me on the couch and it was like a dark room and it scared me and they started laughing and I looked back and I was like huh you know like a nervous type of laugh and then I don't see it's like a fucking really hazy memory but I remember something else scary happening it was like it, it legitimately scared me bad and I try to laugh it off within the span of like a second. And, <laughs> and I look back and those fuckers had left. They'd gone outside. So I grab a broom handle because I remember it was a broom handle. And I start running with it. And I hold it sideways. And to get outside, you have to go through a doorway. <laughs> and in this area, there was like a little air... Uh, in this house there was a little area for the hot water heater in this little nook before you get to the doorway so I start I bolt I run at full speed carrying this fucking uh, broom handle you know at my waist sideways you see where I'm going with this <laughs> and I run 
and I run full fucking speed into this door frame, and it, you know, bends me in half, knocks all the damn wind out of me, I fall on the floor, and I gasp, you know, <gasps> and I get up, and I'm trying to fucking run, and I remember <laughs> not, really, not really being able to move the way I wanted to, because I knocked the wind out of myself, yeah, <laughs> I caught a fucking piece of wood right through my gut. And I ran outside, and it, it, it was just, like, safe. You know, I was home free. Once you get out in the daylight, it, nothing can hurt you in the daylight. Right? <laughs> when you're a little kid, you think that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm a huge Friday the 13th fan. I'm a huge Jason Voorhees fan. And as a kid, I'm going to be rambling, so get ready for that shit. As a kid, I knew who Jason was before I ever saw the movies. Like, I saw the movies as, like, a 10-year-old or 11-year-old. But I had known who Jason was. You know, as a kid, you you go out and trick-or-treating, and you see all the other people dressed up, and you always see, you know, Jasons everywhere. Everyone with the kind of shitty knockoff hockey mask and the fake machetes and all that stuff. So I knew who Jason was. My my aunt and uh, my cousin would decorate their house all the time for Halloween. And for a couple years, you know, those really cool years where, you know, it, it you go out and you get candy as a kid. Like, as a little kid, you know. And they play the Monster Mash and everything. I remember they would they would make this grave. They had this little headstone that they made and they had a pile of dirt. And at the head of the pile of dirt where the headstone is, you had the you have uh, Jason's mask and at the end you'd have these old school from the eighties, you know, camper type shoes, these cat heads, you know, sticking out the bottom as if Jason wore them. But it was cool as a kid to see that. But I was a fan of Jason before I ever saw the movies. And I saw the movies one week, I believe, during the summer. And I might have been... It was either late elementary or early middle school, so it might have been fifth or sixth grade, somewhere in between there. My mom, who was the best, we went to our local video store. And that place was great. You know, as a young as a young fan getting into horror, we we would go there all the time and I rented here's where I'm gonna ramble. I gotta go back to I gotta I guess uh go backwards, but uh we were, I, we rented movies all the time. I rented games a lot as a kid, probably more so than movies. I also ran a lot of wrestling movies because I was into pro wrestling. I still am. I just I don't watch it very much anymore. But uh, yeah, I rented one through nine, and I had, the one that I rented the most was part six because it was my favorite. And the way you do that is you would rent it, you keep it for a few days, and you bring it back. The way we would do it. When I was renting that movie so much, we would go up there. I'd ask my mom if we could rent it again. We'd show the guy, give him the money, and then he'd just let me take the case back again. You know, it was really cool shit. But, uh, the, I, here you go. The, the first time I got really into horror movies, like, legit, that I can think of, like, other than something like Gremlins, because I remember seeing Gremlins and not being afraid. I went with my half brother, who was, you know, a few years older than me. And I went with him one one day to a bunch of flea markets and yard sales and stuff. Or yard sales, not flea markets. But we went to this garage sale. And, you know, my mom had given me, given me some money to spend. And I didn't have too much. I had enough for a few things. But the thing that caught my eye in this one garage sale 
it was like uh, this table that had VHS's, you know, VHS tapes set up like domino style on their sides. And they were set up all around this yard sale, almost around the entire thing. Or the garage sale, like in the garage on these tables. And it circled the entire thing. And I was looking through, and I have no recollection, I have no memory of any other movies except for the ones I bought that day, which were Puppet Master 3, Puppet Master 5, and Killer Tomatoes Strike Back. Now, to someone who is hardcore into horror, who goes out and watches all the extreme stuff, every horror movie that's coming out, they're like, oh man, that's, that's kind of kind of weird. <laughs> You know, Puppet Master and Killer Tomatoes, what's what's scary about that? It wasn't that it was scary, it was just that it was monsters. And it was something in the realm of scary. You know, it was killer dolls, it was puppets killing people. It was tomatoes killing people. Now, Killer Tomatoes is way more of the comedy and way more palpable. And... Puppet Master obviously has gore and nudity and all that stuff. But uh, I, I watched those. I still have those tapes. You know, they're right there in my living room on my shelf. But I watched them over and over and over and over again. And my mom, who would rent movies, she would write down the names of the movies that were playing, you know, the trailers that would play before the movie start started on VHS tapes. She'd write down the movies, and I always thought it was so cool that, that someone actually did that. Someone logged, you know, the title of movies they wanted to watch. You know, that, that was neat to me. And eventually, I rented, you know, a bunch of horror movies from the video store, Discount Video. Um. Ghoulies and Ghoulies 2. I rented Ghoulies 2 so many times. Like, countless times. I love that movie. Loved it so much. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Not a movie I rented. I actually never saw that at my video store. But that's a movie I loved. And I, I loved whenever I saw it on TV. I, I felt lucky to find it on TV. Yeah, it'd play on the Sci-Fi channel. It'd play on one of those weird channels, like the channel that Ghoulies 2 would play on, or uh, Jack Frost 2. <laughs> you know, just randomly it would play. Uh, as a little kid, I, you know, I watched the Halloween films, and I was a fan of them, and I hated Part 3. I fucking hated part three because it didn't have Michael Myers in it. You know, I feel so dumb now the way I used to think, but yeah, I was one of the people, but as a little kid, that was me as a, as a, as a young horror fan. I hated that Michael wasn't in it. And now I can appreciate the movie for what it is. And I enjoy it. When I get into reviewing the Halloween franchise, I'll talk about that. Um, the Chainsaw movies, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's a whole bunch of stories right there. With, with the way I found the original movie, with the way I found out about it, the way I found it in the pawn shop. My first experience with Part Two, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely hating Part Two, and then, you know, over the years, I, I, I fell in love with it. The Hellraiser films are something I just... They're like the, the horrors of the major horror franchise. They're the prostitutes. You know, they're the dirty franchise. <laughs> because Friday the 13th has all these you know releases, you know, hundreds of releases for the Friday the 13th films. Nightmare on Elm Street has a few different releases, you know, respectable... The Child's Play movies, you know, they have some respectable releases. You know, they just recently got a Chucky 7 movie collection that looks pretty fucking cool. 
you know, the the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it, I don't think it has any full franchise release to it, but they've always had their own thing where they had cool releases. But Hellraiser is just, you know, you got the first couple movies, which are badass. You got the third one, which I, I enjoy a lot. You got the fourth one that I enjoy a lot. That's the first one I ever saw. Bloodline. And then you get those movies like Deader, Inferno, Hellseeker, Hellworld. And I say that's, I call it the dirty franchise because that's the franchise, you know, other than something like Children of the Corn, which I wouldn't really call a major franchise as far as like the big players. But Hellraiser had a bunch of releases on Echo Bridge DVDs. Yeah. <laughs> Those shitty collection sets. Like Halloween had a few sets. It had Resurrection and H2O and Curse of Michael Myers. You know, that was scattered here and there. But Hellraiser had like, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, you know? <laughs> Just these shitty releases on Echo Bridge compilation DVDs. You know, packed in there with the Prophecy and, and the Prophecy films and Children of the Corn and these movies from the 70s that, that no one's ever heard of. You know, I was a fan of... I, yeah, I liked Bloodline. That was the first one I saw, and I liked it. And I saw that as a young kid. I remember... Showing my cousin, my very young cousin, not my very young, he was like, shit, five years younger than me, I think. But he was big into horror, and and it was cool watching horror movies with him and our other cousin, you know, so showing them, you know, Bloodline one morning. We woke up and watched Bloodline, and it was so cool to see them watch this bloody, kind of gross Hellraiser film. I love creature features. I I loved waking up on Saturdays and watching the Sci Fi Channel. Cause nowadays you got that S Y F Y and where they changed, and they play a lot of their own, you know, shit. They play a lot of their own TV shows, a lot of their own movies. They do play some old school stuff now and there. Or now and then, uh, here and there. But back in the day, man, sci-fi was the shit. If you were a young horror fan, sci-fi was the fucking bomb. I saw a lot of movies on sci-fi. On the sci-fi channel. Like I, I saw a lot of Mystery Science Theater 3000 on the sci-fi channel. Boggy Creek 2. And the legend continues. Uh... The Final Sacrifice with Roth... What was his name? (laughs) Rothhauser or something? Whatever that character's name was. Uh, Leviathan. The first time I saw Leviathan was on the Sci-Fi Channel. Fucking love that. Seeing Ghoulies 2 on the Sci-Fi Channel was fucking amazing. Here's something I don't know people know about unless you live in the South. And I'm not sure if it played anywhere else in the South, but we had, uh, what was it called? It was called Turner South. Ah, oh, fuck. I, I, I'm not sure if that's what it exactly was called, but it might have been called Turner South. You know, you had Dusty Rhodes showing old NWA matches on there. But one thing they showed a lot of were, you know, kind of country horror movies you know these hun- these uh, horror movies set out in the in the country and they play it early in the mornings and this is one of the things that built my love for watching horror movies early in the a.m. because anytime I'd watch these movies on the sci-fi channel on Turner South it would always be cool the sun wasn't out all the way yet it was kind of foggy I love that atmosphere I love that time of day to watch horror movies I watched so many movies you know so many horror movies around that time 
If there, if there was a pie chart for the time of the age I watch horror movies, you'd have a big chunk right there in the six to eight, you know, time frame AM. But uh oh <laughs> back to Turner South. Turner South played a lot of country horror movies and it's it's funny to hear that, but I wouldn't say a lot either because I know I missed some stuff. I didn't watch it religiously. But they played Critters all the time. It's like they had rights to a few movies. Maybe not to a few. They probably had rights to a lot of movies. But it was like uh, BET. You know, BET would play these horror movies that have a, a, a major black character. Or took place in the hood, sort of like Leprechaun into the hood, <laughs> Leprechaun back to the hood. Uh, they played Jason Goes to Hell a lot because of the Duke character, Creighton Duke. That was always funny to see that. <laughs> Bones with Snoop Dogg, they played a lot of. But Turner South played Critters, and they played Night of the Lepus. And you're you might be asking yourself, what is Night of the Lepus? Night of the Lepus. L-E-P-U-S. It's a creature feature. It's about giant killer rabbits. I shit you not. They made miniatures. They made miniatures of all the sets. You know, barns and everything. Little fences. And they let rabbits roam roam around in these little miniatures. And they filmed it that way. And it's awesome. (laughs) And Scream Factory or Umbrella or Arrow or somebody needs to get a hold of that movie. And put some features on that bitch. (laughs) Because I love that movie. Man. Mosquito. I love Mosquito. The creature feature from the 90s. Not Skeeter, but Mosquito. Mosquito was also because... It didn't just play on Sci-Fi Channel because... Sci-Fi and the USA Network are connected somehow. I forget how it works, but... You'll see Mosquito on the Sci-Fi Channel here and there. But it played mostly on the USA Network. And this is all weird shit that only I probably remember I don't think a lot of people will remember this shit but I loved uh, Mosquito I loved seeing again not having internet not having the movie access to the movie so seeing it pop up on the guide like you know hey at 5 o'clock Mosquito is going to come on you get amped up for it Killer Clowns from Outer Space you know I mentioned that earlier or maybe I didn't did I fuck it that played a lot yeah, I did. I mentioned it because it played on that weird channel, like WGSA or something. And the thing about that was it had scenes in it that aren't in the movie, like on the DVD. It's on the deleted scenes. And one scene in particular was the where you're where they're walking on that rope. It's not a very good effect, but it you know, it it works for me. Man, I'm trying to think of just, you know, you you try to pull out all these memories from years and years ago. I talked about Turner South, I talked about Sci-Fi Channel, I talked about uh, that weird station that played those cool movies. Huh. Let's see, what else we got? I guess I can get into how I started the YouTube channel. So, in 2011, I got internet for the first time. I never grew up with internet. I didn't have internet at all. I rarely even, like, other than my cousin's house, like a couple times, literally a couple of times here and there. 
like over the course of about four years I was able to interact with the internet and in 2011 I got internet for the first time and during that time I found out about YouTube and I just I I fucking like it I like watching reviews I, li I, I liked watching reviews I still do but uh I made a YouTube channel and just to kind of fuck around with it I wasn't really in the know of how everything worked and then uh I made a wrestling channel because I was big into wrestling and I, I found all these cool matches that I wanted to put on my channel and I wanted to be I wanted it to be my place for these matches like hey look I have this collection of Rick Rude matches which you can still find I think you can still find it it's Wrestle Wars 88 and it should still be on here who knows but uh yeah, it didn't last long because little did any of us know because there were a lot of channels at the time like Redneck Spirit Hunter. I remember that name. Fucking Redneck Spirit Hunter. He had hours and like hundreds of hours. Hundreds of hours of, of pay-per-views and NWA and Smoky Mountain Wrestling. And he all that shit went out the fucking window when WWE went on their flagging spree. And they started taking away all these channels. They shut down all these channels. You know, got rid of all this content. And I was one of the victims. I, I had one channel that was completely shut down. The Wrestle Wars 88 used to have over 100 videos. And then... You know, if you look at it now, I think there's maybe, I don't know, 20, maybe. I don't even know. But what what none of us knew was that WWE was, <laughs> I'm talking about WWE on a horror podcast. WWE was getting ready to gear up for the WWE Network. So they wanted all that shit off YouTube so they could post it themselves. The kicker there was they didn't even post full matches for the longest time. They didn't pull, post full pay-per-views. They didn't post full matches. They gave clips. And that was annoying as fuck. But I digress. I also created a horror channel. And I called it Business of Fear. And this is where the origin of the... Not only the name of my YouTube channel. But also the the profile picture if you didn't know uh, I was into Behind the Mask The Rise of Leslie Vernon and I was coming up I was trying to think of some cool name for my YouTube channel I didn't want to have numbers because I remember looking around and like so many people had numbers and they introduced themselves as their username with the numbers so it was like hi my name is Zach Horror three three five or something <laughs> you know, like you'd never call yourself like that in real life but that's how they introduce themselves like mood 616 you know he always says that yes you mood 616 <laughs> but i wanted something cool something that was uh horror related but also kind of clever like I wanted like a quote or something that was from a movie. And I started thinking about it and I was really into Behind the Mask at that time. And I was thinking about it and I was like, oh shit, you know, the business of fear. Eugene, the character in Behind the Mask talks about, you know, all those things they do. And the lead girl's like, you know, the the you know the business of killing or something. And he goes, the business of fear. And I'm like, oh shit, that's that's my channel name. <laughs> the business of fear. I, I I couldn't get the. I don't think the was even 
able to use at that time, but I got Business Sphere and that worked for me. So that's where the name of my channel comes from. It, it comes from Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon, the character of Eugene, who was a great character. That whole movie's great. Leslie Vernon, the character, you know, the, the villain, he's awesome. And from what I can see, he's on my Facebook, Nathan Basil. That guy's cool as fuck. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I was going to originally get, like, clips and put, again, like like the wrestling channel, I was going to have all these cool clips of from horror movies and everything, and people could come and look at all of them on my channel, and it'd be this big melting pot of horror goodness. And then I find out, oh, you can't do that. Copyright strikes, fucker. You can't put music videos. You can't put, you know, themes from movies like Psycho and, you know, the Chainsaw 3 or whatever. So I... I was able to get one thing, and, or two things, rather. One thing was the Psychos. And it was, uh, someone took a the original Psycho and they overlaid it like the imaging over the remake and it lines up perfectly and someone had done that and I posted it on my channel and I don't think it ever really did big numbers but I also got Trevenge and that was a movie I saw on YouTube and JP thinks that he saw it on my channel first because he talks about the bad quality of it and if I'm correct he's thinking of the video that I saw on another channel on YouTube which is no longer around and that one had shitty fucking quality and I ended up going to the site itself ripping <laughs> ripping the short film and putting it on my channel and I did that because one I didn't like the fucking shitty quality of the other one you know I wanted it I wanted it more people to see this fucking thing I loved it so I took it and I put it on my channel it was decent quality at the time probably the best quality at the time other than what you could find on the website But uh, I put it on there so more people could watch it in decent quality. And over the years, I, I still get comments on that fucking thing. I don't reply to anything. I, at least I don't um, try to claim it's mine or anything. I know some people try messaging me about, you know, the entering it in contests. And I had to be like, you know, hey, this this isn't mine. You read the description. It's not mine. <laughs> These guys put a lot of effort into it. Go Go check out their stuff. You know, I'm just showing you. I'm giving you, giving it to you here on YouTube. Go watch it on the website. But I did that, and I couldn't. You know, I wanted to. I wanted to do that, and I realized, you know, I couldn't do that, and I wanted to talk about movies. And you know, do these things these people were doing, like talking in front of the camera. My only problem was, well, not my only problem, I had, one of many problems was I didn't have a microphone and I didn't have a camera. I had no way of doing it. So I had to improvise. I'm like, well, what can I do? How can I get my opinion out there with no camera, with no way of recording my voice? You know, how can I do this? And I looked through, and people had done things like little slideshows, you know, rating stuff like wrestling matches and fights and videos and stuff. And I wanted to be different. And, you know, there were a bunch of top 10s, top 5s, top 15s, top 20s. But there was only one channel, and I think it might have been like this one little one-off type thing of this guy who was reviewing Goosebumps and he had top 13. Now, I didn't get it from him. I had it in my mind. I wanted to use top 13s because, you know, it's the unlucky number. It's, you know, in the 
the world of, you know, horror in a sense. So I wanted to post top 13s. And I was able to do that. I was able to do my favorite, you know, doll movies, favorite, not doll movies, favorite um, toys, killer toys. Is that what it was? That thing. I was able to post my favorite. Ugh, I should be sleeping by now. I work overnights, God damn it. I was able to post. Uh, fuck, man. Trying to think of this shit is hard. <laughs> top 13 vampire movies and top 13 werewolf movies and. You know, franchise rankings. I don't think anyone before me, I'm not taking credit for this shit, but there weren't too many franchise rankings out there. You you always had, you know, my, you know, the Friday 13th franchise worst to best or whatever. You always had that kind of thing. But I took and called it a franchise ranking. Again, I don't know I may be wrong. I may be wrong, but I don't believe anyone at the time was calling it a franchise ranking. Again, I'm not taking credit for it, <laughs> but I will. I like. I would like to think that I helped in coining that little thing. Because now you see all kinds of franchise rankings. You just type in franchise rankings and you get it. You get a ton of videos. It's not just me. And uh, I did all kinds of stuff. I wanted to do the Friday 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street. Friday 13th is my favorite. And I wanted to do the big ones like Nightmare on Elm Street. And I think the first one I ever did was Puppet Master. But I did a lot over the years. I did... Children of the Corn, I did little, like, trilogies of Maniac Cop, and, and I did Scream and stuff like that, uh, Sleepaway Camp, just these movies I'd seen, and some of them weren't true franchises, I will admit that, like uh, Carnosaur, Carnosaur isn't, from what I have on there, isn't a true franchise, it's not a real franchise whatsoever, I mean, th- Three of the movies, I would say uh, four of the movies are connected. The first three are Carnosaur 1, 2, and 3. And then you have Raptor, which is a sort of remake. And then you have Dinosaur Island, which is not connected whatsoever. It's not even like in the same universe. It might be, who knows. But uh, it's not, you know, it's not a Carnosaur movie. It's not Raptor. It's not a remake. The only reason I put it in there was because it was, it used the T-Rexes, you know, the dinosaurs from the Carnosaur films. Uh, over time, I've had to re-upload or uh, redo franchise rankings. I've redone a few top 13s, but I've had to redo franchise rankings because you know, they come out with new movies. I had to redo Silent Night Deadly. And I, I did it three times. JP pointed out one time. We were talking. He's like, hey, man, why'd you do it three times? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. But I had to redo uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I had to redo the Chucky films. <laughs> There's uh, probably one more that I had to redo, but yeah, I mean, I have, I have to do redo the Texas Chainsaw Massacre again because of that fucking Leatherface movie, which I hear is not very good. But who knows? People say shit all the time. Uh, I mean, I've done. I wouldn't say I've done everything. I try to do everything. I've done a good amount of, of stuff on my channel, and for some reason, 
I got subscribers. <laughs> when I started, I'm like, maybe I'll get 20, 30. I have over a thousand now. I have a thousand two hundred something. And I never thought I'd get five. That's crazy to think about. It's really cool too when someone like Killer Saurus comments and he goes, Hey man, you know, you're one of the reasons I started my 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 channel, my rankings, not my channel but my um my franchise rankings. That's fucking cool. Because it's not like... I, I never set out to do that shit. I never thought I'd be someone who, who would inspire someone to make videos. I felt like I was in competition with others to uh, get my videos out there. And to see that was fucking cool. As far as the videos go, I don't know whatever what gets big and why it gets big. I have a video on my channel that has like a quarter of a million views or some shit. Like a top 13 shark or alligator movies, whatever it was. It has a fuckload of views and I have no idea why. I don't know if they get passed around on certain sites and people look at them or I don't know what happens. But I have videos on my channel that are so fucking huge, man. Which is, and it's always those type of videos. Like it's never something like my my channel updates, my uh, Blu-ray DVD updates. This thing, this podcast right now, this, this episode is not going to do numbers at all. <laughs> I'm realistic. I know it's not because I put videos up before, and I'm like, that's not gonna be. That's just not going to do anything. You know, there's going to be very few hits on that. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I do want to do this. I, I want to do more episodes. I want to review. I want to talk about, talk about my top 13s. I want to talk about my franchise rankings. I want to be able to go into detail about why I like a movie and why I don't like a movie you know I want to have my buddies on here I want to have JP I want to have Jeremy I want to have Moods and and uh, Lacey and and uh, Melissa Brandon Marnie <laughs> you know these, these people You know, I want to reach out to people like like uh, Decker Shadow. You know, all this stuff. I I've had plans for the longest time, and I you know just never really had the one the means to and to the the time. This was supposed to be like this episode was supposed to be up before Thanksgiving. I was gonna try to get an episode out before Thanksgiving and then either on Thanksgiving or the day after I was going to review the Planet of the Apes franchise and it was going to be this huge glorious two part episode franchise uh, review you know I was going to talk about all the movies and the the animated series and the, the live action TV show series I was going to talk about all that shit and it just I had no desire to sit right here and talk about whatever in front of a microphone to no one. <laughs> that sound is my eBay app and it's getting annoying. But, uh... <sighs> I think that's it. I mean, hopefully you see more. I, I, I want to talk about stuff. I don't, I don't want to just do rankings and top 13s I, in reviews I do want to talk about some shit like the video stores uh, and, and what that was and what it mean, means to me I want to talk about critics and that's the thing I could talk about right now I I put that in the, the timestamp in the description 
don't let fucking people tell you what to watch and what not to watch. You know, cut that shit out. It's so fucking annoying to see someone say, don't waste your money on this. And then there's people who are like, thanks. Like, what the fuck? You have no idea if you're going to like it or not, motherfucker. I was a kid at the video store, discount video, and I wanted to rent a video game. And my older cousin, he wanted to rent a video game. And I pulled out a game that looked fun to me, it looked cool, and that game was called Clay Fighter. Clay Fighter on the Super Nintendo. And he said, no, man, that, that sucks. That game sucks. Don't, you know, we're not going to get that. And in my dumb little kid brain, I'm like, oh, okay, hey, it, okay. I mean, it looks cool, but okay, if you say so. It sucks. And we got some stupid fucking hockey game that I didn't even like. And years later, probably like five years later, I, you know, it's around time when I'm renting a lot from the video store. Discount video. I want to keep saying that name because that is the best video store of all time. It was. And I'll go into a... I'll do an episode on discount video. How about that shit? I can do that now. <laughs> uh, years later, with my my first friend I ever made, her and I were friends since we were little, little kids. Tiny, tiny kids. I've rented Clay Fighter. And we got back to my aunt's house. And we played it. And we loved it. I fucking loved it. I loved playing that game. I loved everything about it. It was claymation. It was fighting characters. Bad Mr. Frosty. Taffy. Tiny. The Blob. Blue Suede Goo. Ichibod Clay. You know. All of these, these crazy characters with cool moves. It was a fighting game. The backgrounds were, were cool. It was awesome. And it was at that time that I realized that I'm not going to let anybody tell me something sucks without me experiencing it myself. Because he said that game sucked. I played it and I fucking loved it. And I fucking hate it when critics go out and say, don't waste your money, don't spend your money on this. That's why I'm not going to be recommending anything. I will say, if you like this and this and this type of movie, you might like this movie. I'm never going to say, don't go see this shit. I'm never going to say, go out and get it. Because what I like, you may not like. What you like, I may not like. That's just how the way it goes, you know? Also, you know, it's just it's just fucking stupid. <laughs> I mean, it's very sheep-like to be like, oh, okay. <laughs> to see a critic, you know, I used to watch the news a lot when I was younger because I had nothing else to do. I didn't, I didn't you know, during the summer, I wasn't doing anything. I stayed home all day. And just watch bullshit. And in the mornings, I would watch news because I liked the lead anchor and she was hot. <laughs> Robin Mead, if you want to look at her. But uh, I liked her. She was funny. She was hot. And some fucking snobby movie critic dude came on one day. And he's like, you know, he's talking about some movie. I don't know what the movie was. And uh, he goes, skip it. You know, don't waste your time. Not a good movie. Just avoid it at all costs. I remember that. He says, avoid it at all costs. And she's sitting there. And she says, oh, well, thanks. You know, I, you know, thanks for warning me. I'll definitely, uh, you know, watch out for that one. Meaning, you know, not, not going to watch it. And I thought to myself, no. Don't fucking no. <laughs> You don't know if you're gonna. You don't. You don't know, just because he says that. 
you do not fucking know if you like that movie or not. He just said he didn't like it. Doesn't mean you're going to dislike it. It's annoying. And when people post that in groups on Facebook, it's fucking annoying. It's dumb. <laughs> it sucks. Fuck that. That was episode zero. <laughs> I'm Luis. You can find me on Instagram at Mr. Luis Antonio. Uh, maybe you might find me on the website. Who knows? I There may be talks of horrorphilia.com. But again, who knows? Uh, yeah, if you like it, if you don't like it, whatever, thumbs up, thumbs down. None of that shit means anything. Actually, it does. You know, I don't really, I don't like negativity. <laughs> yeah, I hopefully see you back for another episode. Episode one. See you guys. <laughs>